Rhythm of Life Community Chorus. Man, I miss you guys. Welcome to my home, my apartment, um, music studio, practice room, um, hangout area, kitchen, all the above. But since this quarantine stuff has started, I made some serious improvements in my life. So now step into my new improved office. Here we are. I know it's a beautiful office. Um, got all the important homies here. My boy Mozart. Got uh, my boy Bach, who's here. I even got my boy Igor Stravinsky up there on the wall. Thanks to uh, Patty and Lloyd. So yeah, we're having a party. It's great, great, great times here. I hope you're all enjoying this lovely weather. I hope to hear soon. Um, <clears throat> Man, what a tough time this has been, not being able to see you all and not being able to sing with you. Um, but, you know, we are doing what we can, I'm sure. Um, I do know that one of the things that I've never, that I've always kind of been bummed about is whenever we're in the middle of a session, I'm always like, I want to teach you so many things about music. Because um, I know that I tend to just say things and sometimes people are like, what does that mean? Um, so this is a good opportunity to uh, talk about some of these things that we just don't really have the time to otherwise. And I think if you're like me, you're like, man, I want to keep my, my brain nurtured and I want to keep growing as a musician and as a person and all these things. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to start doing this thing weekly where I'm just going to start, I'm calling it skills sessions with uh, Professor Ballard. Uh, and, and hopefully we can talk about some things. If you have suggestions on what I should talk about or things that you would just love to hear addressed or have questions, feel free to reach out. If I say anything in this video that you're like, mm, you did not help me understand that. Uh, I love chatting about these things. So um, never feel like a burden or anything. I would love to chat with you. The first thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna talk through a score, all the aspects of one score. And I'm just going to give you some terminology. Hopefully you'll hear something and go, oh, I never knew what that was. Or, you know, I've heard people say that and I've always been too afraid to ask. Um, and then in the weeks to come, I will try to relate it more towards the music that we've worked on in the past or music, music that we were working on. So you can actually take the music that we were working on and take notes if you'd like. Um, the second part of this is I'm going to show you I'm gonna give you like a basic crash course on sightreadingfactory.com, which is a great resource, I think, for anybody, <clears throat> regardless of your level. So I'm gonna share my screen here, and we're gonna look at this Howell's Requiem. Uh, this is easily my favorite piece of music, Herbert Howell's Requiem. If you just Google that, you can find this score. Um, and if you're looking for a new piece of music to listen to, it's um, absolutely heart-wrenching. So, Looking here, the basic uh, notational system in Western music is laid out on what's called a staff. And that's just the five lines, one, two, three, four, five. And we call it a staff. Um, when you're talking about plural, like more than one staff, we can say staves. So here we have six different staves. You all see how that works? And if you notice, there's this line that goes through all of this stuff. And that makes all six of these staves one system of music. Some people can refer to this as score, but to me, like a score is like a, like a piece of music. Like this is to me, it's a score. But um, sometimes you'll hear that also. So this is one system. This is a system. So this first page has two systems. And that just means that all of this music is going on at the same time. So if you're singing soprano, you're going to read through here and then go all the way down here. Okay. If you look at the second page, again, six staves, six staves, two systems, again, pretty straightforward. As we jump down to the third page, you will notice that there is a line going through all of this music. That means that all of this music is actually one system and all will happen at the same time. And the reason is because you'll see Howells has broken it up into choir one and choir two. Um, so if you're singing tenor, this is quite confusing, but just to let you know, if you're singing tenor in choir one, you'll sing all the way through here. 
this tenor in choir two is a different line. So you're actually gonna go all the way from here to the next page and start singing there again. Luckily, in Rhythm of Life, we don't get music with that many staves that often. I think Light of a Clear Blue Morn has kind of had a lot of stuff. But if you look at like an orchestral score, this line goes through all of this. That means that all this music happens at the same time. So if you're reading one line, in order to go to the next system, you go all the way to the next page. So it's a little crazy. Um, again, we don't really have to deal with that, so that's nice. So back to the first page, um, we have the space between two bar lines. Excuse me, it's called a staff. I'm oh, sorry, gosh, it's one of those days. It's called a measure. <clears throat> so this first system has four measures. You see one, two, three, four. Sometimes they will be marked, which is nice when composers do that. Here, if you look all the way, you can see they kind of marked it way down here, hidden in a hidden manner. So you have one, two, three, four, five. I always just write in my measure numbers if I am if they're not marked very clearly. Um, so like, let's say the conductor says start at measure 12. You'll have to be like, okay, nine, you find the nine, 10, 11, 12. Whereas if I just have it there, it's, oh, boom, there's 12. I got there really fast. Um, these are called clefs over here. And this just tells us which pitches are associated with each staff. Sometimes they are different. So for instance, this is a bass clef. This is a treble clef. They're completely different systems as far as pitches go. Luckily for sopranos and altos, you're gonna mostly always read treble clef, so every good boy deserves fudge and space is space. Um, <clears throat> we're not gonna worry about that too much. We're gonna talk about that, I believe, week three. I'm gonna break that down for you. Um, bass clef has a completely different system. Um, so it's just important to know, tenors will sometimes read bass clef, sometimes read treble clef, so tenors keep your eye out for that. Basses every now and then will read treble clef, but not often. Tenors oftentimes have this little eight down here, right on the little tail. And that just tells us that all the tenor stuff will be an octave down from the normal treble clef stuff. Um, this particular composer didn't do that. But if you look here, the tenors are on an A. Altos are on a D, sopranos are on an F sharp. The A is technically above both of these. Because we know that the tenors sing lower, we're just gonna use our brains and say, well, yeah, that's probably not a higher A. Just uh, something to pay attention to. <clears throat> These little things here are called key signatures, and that's gonna just tell us which black notes on the piano we're playing. Um, so we have flats here. These little squiggly things are called flats. Um, what that means is, so here we have B and E have a flat on them. Anytime on the piano in this particular piece, you play a B or an E, instead of playing the B or an E, you're going to take the black note lower, half step lower, which is B flat or E flat, and you're going to play that black note. Um, if you want to think of it further, further to your left, right? Um, this right here looks like a hashtag. It's called a sharp, and it actually does the opposite. It takes, so this is an F. It takes that F and makes it a half step higher. So you would play the F sharp next to the F. Sometimes we will see these in the key signature as well. Um, it just kind of depends. Not super important for singers, but good to know. This is called a time signature. And I believe week seven, we're going to break this down pretty in depth. Um, but this is just how we organize time in music. So here, this just tells us that we get three half notes per measure. If that doesn't make sense right now, don't worry about it. It's for future weeks, um, but that'll help us. So then um, as far as just a couple other things that we're gonna talk about in future weeks, we have dynamics. So like pianissimo, crescendo, diminuendo, piano, poco crescendo. These are all just volume, how loud, how soft. And then the other thing that we're gonna cover in depth, I think week four is articulation. So sometimes we have tenuto, Sometimes we have an accent, sometimes we have a staccato, and that's just the manner in which you play the note. So how heavy is it? How short is it? How long is it? That kind of stuff. Um, but again, we'll go into that. 
The last little thing I briefly want to mention is tempo markings. Here, this is really straightforward. Slowly, but with flexible rhythm, half note equals 56. You don't need to know that, but it's cool to know. Um, if we go down to page three, this gets a little bit more, we're now in Italian. <laughs> Poco rallentando al meno mosso. That just means we're gonna gradually get softer until we land with less motion or at a slower tempo. None of those really mean a whole lot to you if, if you don't want to. <laughs> you could literally cross all those out and say, look up. But if you wanna empower yourself and just know a little bit more, I mean, feel free to translate those and then if whoever is waving their hands in front of you does something incorrect, you are empowered to say, um, actually, um, we've studied it, I think. <laughs> but um, which is cool to know. So <clears throat> hopefully I answered some questions or um, helped you out in one way at least, or maybe made you think of something. Or if you didn't learn anything, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm really quickly gonna show you what's called sightreadingfactory.com. I think this is a great resource for people if you've never sight read before, or if you've been sight reading for 30 years, I think it's applicable to all. So you're just gonna go sightreadingfactory.com and then try it for free. Here we have several options. Most of us are likely gonna stick with voice. Um, I do wanna point out you can do rhythm only. So let's just go rhythm only, level one, let's keep it basic. You can do random, you can choose a time signature. I'm gonna say four, four. Start free play. So with this, I can just kind of give it a practice. Um, up here in the corner, we have a little metronome. Help you stay in time. If you wanna slow it down, put it at like 72, and then slow that tempo down. If you mess up and you're not sure where you went wrong, you can go ahead and just play it for yourself. To kind of just check yourself. And then once you've mastered that one, you can go next. Boom. Um, I'm going through this fairly quickly. But let's go back all the way to here. So ensemble, I'm gonna put this option out for anybody who wants to take me up on it. If you want to meet up and do some social distance sight reading, we could do choir, multi-part, boom, and we can add voices. You can do two-part sight reading, in other words. Sight read with a friend. It's so fun. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, I'm really bad at this. Okay, I'm going to go all the way back here. Um, so voice is probably what most of us are going to pick. You can choose what your voice part is. I'm going to choose baritone since I'm a baritone. Um, for levels, let's keep it at level one. You can do custom if you have very specific things that you want to work on. I want to put it at level one. Let's keep it in C major. You can do random key signature. I think we're still in 4-4. Great. <clears throat> so now um, here, I can give myself the tempo again. I can still do the metronome just like in rhythm. Now I have a tuning fork, which will give me my starting note. And for right now, everything's going to be do based. If you're starting with these, uh, oh, with these earlier levels, and do, oh, that's gonna be do, oh, you're starting note, and you can sing with solfege. If you wanna sing la 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 for now, that's fine. Week three, I'm gonna break down some serious solfege stuff. But this is how we start. Do, re, mi, fa, mi, mi, re, do, re, mi, fa, so you see how you can do that, go through it. Um, again, if you have a hard time, you can play a spot. Let me just real quick for if you're a higher level, let's say, let's go level four. Still not too crazy, but maybe for some of us more experienced folks, that's still, still our do, do, re, do, fo, fa, mi, so. La la sol do ti la sol mi mi re do sol fa mi sol do re mi re do. Sorry, I'm a little out of out of practice. <laughs> I warmed up. Do I hope it's moved on more or less in the right key. <laughs> but let's say you go. 
Undo re do so fa mi so. Wait, not, am I right? If you can play it back. Do re do so fa mi so. Oh, see, I was wrong there, and you can kind of pinpoint where you're wrong. Um, so that's just a little crash course. We'll, I'll, I'll give you more tools on how to be more successful in that. But give it a shot. Um, or if you want more help this week, just, hey, I want to get started now. Give me a call. I'll, I'll walk you through whatever you'd like me to. Um, I think this will be a lot of fun. Um, so again, I have the first four weeks laid out. Um, but if you're like, hey, I really want to talk about this. I'm happy to cover whatever. Um, so yeah, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you tune in next week. I will plan to send these out Mondays. Um, until then, I'll see you, see you next week. Professor Ballard signing off. I love you guys.